We recently talked about, you know, how announcing the proverbial move of a channel um, could lead to the end of a channel, but it, this is the first time in a while that I've seen someone come back after hiatus from YouTube with a stunt that could end their channel. That's it. That's my intro. Hey, I'm Amanda watching Swan Entertainment, and today we are talking about Caroline Consnar. She is a YouTuber, um, or was. It's a complicated situation. She just recently came back to YouTube uh, with a pretty big life announcement and then followed it up with another video that made a lot of people very upset. Understandably, because it's a little insane. This whole situation is weird and I heard about it from a TikTok, so I want to uh, plug this TikTok first because I had never heard of Caroline before this. I, some of her content seems familiar, so I'm sure I saw clips here and there. Emily Ann or M. Hahi on TikTok shared this video talking about, you know, a situation that M called it a niche YouTube tea that like they just didn't see people talking about on TikTok. So basically let's start from the beginning. Caroline Consnar is a YouTuber with 1.1 million subs on YouTube and does a lot of, uh, you know, uh, musical based content and things like that. Lots of views across her videos. She's this kind of like VHS kind of style to a lot of her videos that I think is interesting. But until three weeks ago, she hasn't put out a video in a year. Uh, the last video she put out was a year ago for For Free Song, and it's a song about feet. And then Caroline came back with a video um, titled, I Have an Announcement. And it is about how uh, she is pregnant at 20 years old. But really quick, let me tell you about the sponsor for today's video, Cook Unity. Cook Unity is the first ever chef to you food delivery service, bringing you restaurant quality meals directly to your table at home. Cook Unity's 50 plus chefs come from the best restaurants all over the country, and each week they bring you their best, most delicious meals straight to your table. How it works is that at the start, you set your preferences, tell them what you like and what you don't like and pick a meal plan. You tell them what you like. You say, start You start by setting your preferences, telling them what you like and don't like and pick a meal plan. And then you choose the meals that look best for you that week. Meals arrive fresh, never frozen, postable, recyclable, or reusable packaging with expiration dates, chef's heating instructions, and nutritional information. Cook Unity chefs offer a wide range of meals with over seven different dietary preference fillers, including vegan, paleo, and gluten-free options. Two of the meals I got this week were Ann Thornton's summer risotto, Andre Mendez's baked soy in Cajun pan sauce, and Cedric Nicholas's spaghetti aglio e olio with shrimp. Now for the best result, it is recommended to heat these up in an oven, but if you're like me and super busy, the microwave is totally an option as well. And these aren't just good for dinner. Like here, I'm eating the risotto for lunch after a long workout. Go to cookunity.com slash swell50 to get 50% off your first order, or go ahead and click the link in my description box and use code swell50 there so that you can get started trying meals with Cook Unity for 50% off. And thank you again to Cook Unity for sponsoring this video. I'm ovulating and I had like a plug of blood come out and I was like, oh my God, I'm pregnant. <laughs> this video is only five minutes long, but it covers a lot and it's kind of shot in like that quirky vlog style, just showing like what she wants to do with her life. Should she have to want to do something with her life? She is having this baby, goes into a bit about fertility issues that she had when she was 16 and how this, this pregnancy could affect her ability to have babies in the future. My fertility has always been kind of weird. I'm pregnant and if there's any kind of like surgical intervention, I could really fuck up my fertility. Like I could, I might not be able to have a kid again. And then the other thing is, is that if I have this kid, it's very likely that I won't be able to have another one. Very emotional and vulnerable topics for anyone to go through let alone document in a video. Here's the uh, caption here. Yep, the rumors are true. I'm knocked up big time. To protect the privacy of my family and loved ones, a lot of information has purposely been omitted from this announcement. Please understand. Anyways, very excited to exploit this child for views and I am so excited you're gonna help me do it. Love you all. The comment section, everyone talking about what a great cool mom she's gonna be. And then you've got a co comment here. The fact there's still like a 50% chance this is a psyop is making me go insane. And then you have this comment. It's crazy how believable this entire video was despite being completely false. About three minutes and 45 seconds into the video, she starts talking about the concept of coming back to YouTube after a year long hiatus with an announcement like this. And I think this is, the most truthful part of this video, frankly. YouTube is not taken seriously. YouTubers are not taken seriously. That's a really frightening prospect. But now as I get older and I start to really think about my place in this world, I wonder what should I do with my influence? It's hard to express the feelings that I'm experiencing right now because there's so much fear 
and anxiety. I slapped this video together just to let you all know where I've been for the past few months and where I'm going to be in the coming months. And I really hope that I can take you on this journey with me. That was this video. And then nine days ago, she posted, I lost the baby. It opens with a quirky bit of her tearing through her apartment, looking for the baby. This whole thing um, was a bit to make a commenter, a social experiment, if you will, on how audiences don't really know the people they follow and they shouldn't trust them, essentially. When you're a content creator, the line between entertainment and reality is very blurred. Your audience will become very attached to an abstraction of yourself. And the odd thing is that this connection can become very personally meaningful to the viewers whilst not being personally meaningful to the creator itself. The experience of having a parasocial relationship with your audience can be very uncomfortable. You're not real, and I'm not real, and none of this is real. And yet the effect that we have on each other is still very real. It's a very thin metaphor. And I want to explain a couple of things here. When someone takes a hiatus from YouTube, okay, it used to be the expectation, that was the fear for a lot of YouTubers, that we're dealing with burnout. I think Alicia Marie made a, a good video about this uh, when she did her break uh, years ago, or at least spoke about it on their podcast at the time. And she talked about how she was very scared about taking a hiatus from YouTube because she was worried about it destroying her channel. And there is a lot of people who, I think to some degree do still believe that, that if they take time for themselves, to prevent burnout or to spend time with family even, or, you know, to go through a loss of a loved one or anything like that, that, you know, that will damage their channel and the algorithm and all of that. Now we know that that's really not the case, at least in current day, really. There's plenty of YouTubers who have very infrequent posting schedules. There are plenty of YouTubers who take two years off and then make a video when it goes well, or YouTubers who just only work on long, big projects. Now that's not the norm for everyone. So you can't come to my DMs and be like, well, I do that and I still have 200 subs. Okay, are your videos good? I don't know what to tell you. But there are people who are worried about that hiatus and how it can affect their channel, okay? So after a year long hiatus, there is a possibility that she wanted to just inject some views into her algorithm because she said she's coming back to YouTube. That is real. And a good way to do that is to announce that you're with child or that you have an announcement. Okay. I have talked about last year a lot in 2022. I talked a little bit about all of these uh, reality TV shows that were trying to get off the ground that were featured around influencers and content creators and without fail where they always typically fell apart in their, uh, premise would be that one of the challenges would be, oh, you have to get X amount of followers who can get X amount of followers in a certain amount of time. And I was like, or, or views or something like that. And I literally would tell people, I'd be like, the first thing I would do is I'm keeping it. And that's the title of the video. And I'm putting that out and we're going to see what happens, you know, like, cause that'll, you guys accuse me of being pregnant on the regular, which is very funny to me. But like, that's what I think it was. Is she was like, oh, what'll get people's attention? Oh, I'm 20 and I could be pregnant. Here we go. And then to go and do the I lost the baby thing is insane. You talked about a lot of very vulnerable things in the video. Like again, the fertility issues, things like that. I don't wanna completely think that that was fake. I don't trust really anything that you say from now to the rest of time, frankly. Um, which I guess your whole point is that, hey, you shouldn't trust me. Sure, okay, cool, congrats, I don't. But I would hope that with, you know, the amount of people that were like really encouraging you and were, you know, being supportive about, you know, the risk you were taking with having a baby, despite what you were talking about, that that would be, you know, something that you at least feel a little bad about. A little shame, I would hope, just as a human being. Forget being, you know, as a woman, just as a human being, I would hope that you would feel bad about that. As far as the whole point of this, you know, bit, she's making a Patreon. We all come here to find this connection over and over again. And we don't really find it until now, when you subscribe to my Patreon. I understand it wasn't appropriate for me to lie about being pregnant. My bad. That's the description box. She also tagged the phrase, if you're mad at Caroline, then you must be new here. And to have the phrase, I understand it was inappropriate for me to lie about being pregnant. My bad. And then to still have that thumbnail of you looking sad while also next to your pregnant belly and having the title, I lost the baby. I really hope you understand how insane that is. We're past performance art at this point.
You're just being cruel. I lied about being pregnant as a joke. And the joke is not that pregnancy under strenuous circumstances is funny. The joke is not that the audience was gullible enough to believe that I was pregnant. The joke is you connected to something that wasn't real. And I have become something that isn't real. You, mm, okay. She says the joke is not that pregnancy under strenuous circumstances is funny. The joke is not that suffering is funny or whatever. The joke is, is that you connected to something that isn't real because you made people feel connected to you via your content. You um, elicited an emotional response for a young new mother. You did that. And then you're like, oh, joke's on you for falling for that. You're 20, but like you were old enough to make this bit. So like, I, I'm sorry, what? I'm not articulating myself enough because I'm so flabbergasted by all of this that like you thought that, th th I faked pregnant, being pregnant as a joke. And then to, to talk about fertility issues, to talk about, you know, how even just having this baby could make it so that you can't have children in the future. What this means for you to be, like the experience you had telling people you were pregnant and you know, how they responded to you and what that meant and things like that. Like that's, that's crazy. Oh yeah, that's fucking right. This entire stunt has been an advertisement for my Patreon. I'm also announcing that I'm coming back to YouTube. Listen, I wanted to come back to YouTube and explain to everyone why I had been gone and what had happened to me in that time that made me want to come back. But some of you in my audience are pretty weird and I don't blame any of you. You know, you can't help being weird, but I didn't think that it would be healthy for me to expose myself like that to all of you. And that's why I decided to keep a lot of my more sensitive information behind a paywall, where I would hope some of the audience would be more intentional with how they interact with me because now it costs money to do so. I wanted to come back to YouTube and I wanted to explain why I was gone, but I don't want to give my weird audience ammunition. So instead of doing that, I decided to make a fictitious, potentially traumatic pregnancy story to weed out the weirdos so that the real people can give me money to support me on another platform. God, what is this sounding like? Oh, the people that believe in my, my vision and what we're building, what does that sound like? Listen, I know everyone's struggling for money right now. I know every, the, the, the industry is bad, okay? But like, surely faking a pregnancy is not the way to get people to your Patreon. Like I get people to my Patreon with, you know, live streams, small live streams. I talk about whatever topics they want. They get it twice a month. We talk about it. We talk for like 45 minutes to an hour, maybe longer, depending on what we're talking about. You know, uh, they get bonus content from all the B-roll, from all the events I go to, you know, like they're, they're stuff. They get early access, you know, like that, that usually, that usually gets it. I don't think you need to like, Hey, do you want to see the traumatic year I've had? to talk about, you know, personal stuff. And maybe that's because I'm weird because I talk about, I, I sprinkle in, you know, little bits of my worms, my trauma into the, into the conversation here and there when I feel it's relevant. But then again, I do also have some weirdos following me. I've had to block a few of you on social media, you know, like that is a reality of being on the internet. But I also would like you to know as well, Caroline, if you see this, the weird ones will also be the ones who believe that spending money are the, means that they are entitled to your attention. You gotta be very careful, okay? Because just because it's behind a paywall, the intention could be from the people that you are worried about. Cause that, that, that can be it. You know, there's a fine line between, you know, admiration and obsession. And you gotta be very aware of that when you're on the internet, okay? There, there's really not a ton that you can do to protect yourself aside from, you know, putting up boundaries for yourself with your audience. There's a reason I never say, you know, I'm not even gonna look at the camera when I say this. The reason I never say I love you guys to the camera, there's a reason for that. I appreciate my audience. I appreciate the support that I have, okay? But I don't know you, you do not know me. You see maybe 15% of my personality, if that. I appreciate the people like watching my content. Caroline, I'm sure you appreciate that as well. But like, you're right, people don't know you. I don't think you need to get that point across and promote your Patreon with creating a fictitious pregnancy storyline and then saying you lost the baby. The title is still, at the time you're recording, this still says I lost the baby for this thing that you said is a joke. That's a line that you have now crossed with your audience because you created that emotional response of making people you know, feel for you and root for you to be a good mom and to go through this experience 
and you were so excited to talk about like, oh yeah, my kid's gonna be in content, we're gonna do X, Y, and Z. You know, you were, you did that. And then now you pin a comment that says, again, if you're mad at Caroline, then you must be new here. We don't know you, but we should know you well enough to know that this whole thing was a joke is crazy. I hate when people who aren't that smart recognize word salads to excuse poor choices and behavior. Having empathy does not equal a parasocial relationship, be for real. Exactly, that's that. Like you can have empathy for people and not be obsessed with them, not believe that you know them. Like you can have empathy, sympathy, you know, you can commiserate with someone through a screen and it doesn't mean that you have a parasocial dynamic and feel like you know them. You can feel connected by a shared trauma, a shared issue. I'm sure that happens a lot. That doesn't necessarily mean that there is now a parasocial dynamic where that person believes they know the other person or the otherwise. In a sense, you technically did a one-sided parasocial relationship where you weaponized your parasocial bond with your audience and you got them to feel an emotional response for you. And then now it's like, ha ha, I got you. If you're in on the joke, you'll give me money. That is also weaponizing parasocial behavior for the record. Some of y'all in my audience is weird proceeds to make a fake pregnancy and miscarriage just to promote a Patreon. So check out our Patreon. Lil guppies, big dogs, up close and personal, 50, 32 a month. This price I value my most sensitive personal information at. In this tier, you get an exclusive update video that details where I really have been the past five years. You'll also get access to a special group chat. Because of the nature of what she's talking about, she's saying there's personal information there. I don't think that's up to me to go into and share, okay, in a video, because it's behind a paywall for a reason, okay? Um, I don't think that is fair for me to do. Big dogs, 15.48 a month. I don't have Twitter. I don't know how to use Twitter, I but I'd like to put my thoughts somewhere. Uh, Sent from my iPhone, you'll probably get more value than the first tier. I just can't define how. This is an artistic process. I'm completely sober while writing this. It's literally a Wednesday at 10 a.m. Are you not 20 years old? Just curious. She's got a thousand dollars a month already. Welcome to the Patreon. Oh, this is public. Fellas, listen, I don't think that you should spend any money on this content. Personally, I wouldn't spend any money on this content because it's, I made the content. I'm taking this seriously. I know everything about this page looks like I'm not taking it seriously. I am taking it seriously. So paid members currently, she has 66 paid members at the time of me recording this. She launched all of this May 1st, uh, her video went live May 1st, premiered May 1st. So yes, she premiered it. Oh, I wonder what that chat looked like. I really, really do. Funny, one of the recommended videos under her page is how to destroy your audience's trust by Swell Entertainment, huh? If you keep up with Patreon, good for you, you know? But I, I think at the very least, this whole thing is insane. I won't be subscribing. I will not be pledging on Patreon. It's weird. It feels pseudo intellectual. It feels off and I'm sure some Caroline fans will come to my DMs or something and be like, you just don't get it. This is her content, this is her comedy. Um, this is very weird to essentially weaponize emotional support from a stunt to advertise your Patreon. You also can come back and just say, hey, I was going through some stuff, I'm good now, Let's talk about content, you know? Like, let's get back to advice with not a doctor because she does the advice series or whatever, you know? Like, let's get back to that. Like, you can do that. You don't have to do this stunt. There's stunts all the time on social media. We've, there's This isn't even the first pregnancy stunt I've seen. There was a very famous one years ago, you know, where uh, the, the husband got pee from a toilet and put it on a pregnancy stick. It was like, oh my God, she's pregnant. And then... They, they lost the baby and all that. And I'm like, I think that the husband was involved in an Ashley Madison leak, actually. I vote we just stop with the pregnancy stuff. Maybe it's because I'm 26, uh, but it does feel like everyone is pregnant currently, like real life, like celebrity people. Not that that's real life, but like you get my point. Like everyone around me, it feels like they're announcing pregnancies. And I'm just like, I have a Yuki bear and I have a Hermes, and those are my children. Have you ever heard of Caroline? Did you ever see any of her VHS videos? Um, did you see this video? Did you also think that this is incredibly weird? Let me know, comment down below. Reminder, I stream on Twitch. Reminder, the Swell Entertainment is now available on Spotify. Reminder that you can get 10% off on gamer subs using code SWELL. Shout out to my patron. Thank you so much for supporting me on my Patreon. Uh, if you'd like to follow me on my social media, that'll be all up here. That's gonna be it, have a the day. Goodbye. It's, yeah, you know, hmm, weird, 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 weird. Thank you, Oz, Eva, Ayana, Abby, Angel, Goth, Glenn, Palace, Pink, 
Jasmine, Lauren, Amy, Aslan, Medic, Rosie, Victor, Andrew, Tenzin, Sam, Mae West, Michael, Ryan, Adira, Nathan, Zwink, Literal, Jeffrey, Randy, QWERTY, Nomad, Thomas, Tasha, Donnie, Winter, Kenny, Robert, Cameron, Elliot.